Part 1. You'll hear a man calling a catering company. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello, 5 Star Caterers. Can I help you? Oh, yes. I spoke to you an hour ago about the arrangements for our end-of-term party. Oh, that's right. It's Mr. Saunders, isn't it? Actually, it's Sanders. That's S-A-N-D-E-R-S. -E oh, I'm sorry. I'll just get that down correctly on the form. OK, Mr. Sanders, sorry about that. No problem. Well, I've got the details you asked for, so I thought I should call you back quickly and book. Good. Let's fill in the form, shall we? Great. First of all, can you give me a telephone number? Somewhere where you can be contacted during the day. Yes. It's 445-6786. 445-6786. OK. And do you have a number where you can be contacted outside of office hours? Well, I'm at work till late in the evening, so use the same number. And if I'm not there, you can leave a message. Thanks. I'll make a note of that. And how many guests shall I put down? OK. That's changed. So instead of the figure I gave you before of 85, it's now only 50. It's much lower, I'm afraid, because a lot of people can't make that date. That's not a problem. Can you remind me of the date we'd set? Yes. It's the 25th of June. OK, that's fine. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, did you have the chance to look at the tables on the website? Yes, I did. And I think the rectangular tables would be good. The long, thin ones. Yes, um, you could have two of those. The only problem is that they're for 24 people. So you'd only seat 48 people that way. And if you have 50 guests... Oh, I see what you mean. Two people have nowhere to sit. What about the square ones? You'd have the same problem with numbers. Usually, for 50 people, we find the round tables work well. Not the smaller ones. They only seat six people. The ones that seat 10, the large ones. So do you think we should have five of those? I think that would work well. OK. That's what we'll do then. Fine. And have you decided on the menu you would like? Yes, I think so. But I wanted to ask you, we talked about having the three-course meal with waiter service. But in the end, we thought it would be a bit too formal. So that leaves the buffet or the seven-course banquet. How much is a banquet again? A hundred pounds a head. That's too much and too formal. The buffet is fine. OK, so I think I've got everything. We'd need a deposit of 50% of the total. Right. What's the total? Just a minute. Yes, it's 30 pounds a head times 50. So that's 1,500 pounds. 50% of that would be 750 now, with the balance due 
another 750 on the day. Great. I'll call in tomorrow if that's okay. I can pay you the deposit then. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow then. Okay. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. A man wants to place an order by telephone for some office stationery. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Thank you for calling Millennium Office Supplies. If you would like to place an order, please press 1. Your call has been placed in a queue. A customer service operator will be with you shortly. Gina speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I'd like to order some stationery, please. And who am I speaking to? John Carter. Right. Can I just confirm your account number and the name of your company, John? Sure. The account number is 692411. 692411. Right. And you're from Rainbow Computers? Uh, no, the company is Rainbow Communications. Oh, OK. I'll just fix that on the system. Communications. And what would you like to order, John? Uh, envelopes. We need a box of A4, that is, normal size envelopes. White, yellow or manila? Um, we'll have the plain white, please. Uh, but the ones with the little windows. OK. One box... A4 white. Just the one box, was it? Um, on second thoughts, make that two boxes. We go through heaps of envelopes. Um, as a matter of interest, are they made from recycled paper? No, you can't get white recycled paper. The recycled ones are grey, and they're more expensive, actually. Right, we'll stick to white then. Something else, John? Yes, we need some coloured photocopy paper. What colours do you have? We've got purple, light blue, blue, light green, whatever you want, pretty much. There are 500 sheets to the pack. Right, let's see. Um, we're going to need a lot of blue paper for our new price lists, so can you give us 10 packs, please? Make sure it's the light blue, though. 10 packs of the light blue. The woman asks the man if he needs anything else. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Anything else that we can help you with? Um, uh, let me think. What else do we need? Uh, oh, I'm sure there was something else. P. 
pens, paper clips, fax paper, computer supplies, office furniture. Yeah, ah, oh yes, we need floppy disks. Do you have those nice coloured ones? Yes, but they're a bit more expensive than the black ones. Oh, that's all right. I'm not paying anyway. <laughs> right. Floppy disks. And what about diaries for next year? We've got them in stock already and it's a good idea to order early. Um, no, I think we're all right for diaries. But something we do need is one of those big wall calendars. You know, one that shows the whole year at a glance. Do you stock those? We certainly do. OK, can you include a wall calendar then, uh, with the other stuff? Um, just make sure it's got the whole year on the one side. Sure. And do you have a copy of our new catalogue? No, I don't, but could you send one? Yes, I'll pop one in with the order. You'll find it a lot easier to remember what you need if you have our catalogue in front of you next time. Yes, good idea. And um, when can you deliver this? Should be with you tomorrow morning. Can you make sure that it's not after 11.30am? Because I have to go out at 12. There's only myself here on Fridays. Fine. I'll make a note on the delivery docket that they should deliver before half past 11. Thanks very much. Thanks. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a student, Penny, talking to two friends, Ray and Louise, about a television competition Ray has entered called Travel Documentary. Before you hear the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, haven't seen you two in ages. What have you been up to? Hi Penny, Ray is really excited. He's just been shortlisted for travel documentary. He could be off travelling around the world for three months. Travel documentary? What's that? You've never heard of it? Don't you watch TV? Well, actually, no, hardly ever, especially since I've started working on my thesis. I don't have time to breathe, let alone watch TV. So what's this all about, Ray? Well, actually, it, it's a competition run by Public TV. It involves my two great loves, travel and filmmaking. Is it that program where people are sent around the world making documentary videos? I have heard of it. Fantastic! So you've been chosen? Not yet. I'm one of 34 selected for an interview next week, so I've made it through the first cut. Yeah, there were over 200 applicants from around the country. Pretty amazing, hey? Well, I've been lucky so far. What's the next stage? 13 are chosen from the interview to do a four-week training course in documentary filmmaking. Then, the eight finalists get sent off with a video camera to travel around the world. Sounds incredible. What's the catch? The catch is that every two weeks, you have to send in a 10-minute video from a different part of the world. It's broadcast on TV along with the work of three of the other competitors and judged by a panel of experts and the TV audience. So you're under a lot of pressure. Wow, I guess so. You mean you're on television every two weeks? Yep, that's right. 
But first, I have to be selected. Do you have to have any filmmaking experience to apply? Some background in photography or video making helps, but you're not supposed to be an expert. In fact, you can't apply if you've already worked in filmmaking. We all get the same four week course, so we start with the same skills. Can you go anywhere in the world you want? Each competitor makes up his or her own travel plans and has to get them approved. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, as the conversation continues, answer questions 27 to 30. Have you talked with anyone else who has done it? As a matter of fact, just last week, I met Sarah Price, a girl from here who did it last year. What did she have to say about it? She said it was the most amazing experience of her life, but it was really tough at times. I think you'd have to be really brave to take off like that alone with so much responsibility. It's not like going on a holiday, is it? <laughs> no. Two weeks in a country often where you can't speak the language to find a story, film it, organise all the editing. Then you're off to a completely different part of the world to start all over again. Pretty exhausting, but exciting too. What a way to see the world. What about Sarah Price? Did she have any bad experiences? She said the worst part was when she got some mysterious fever in Mongolia and thought she might have to be sent home. Fortunately, it got better, but she said it was scary to feel really ill when you're alone so far away. So what made you want to apply? When I saw the program on TV a while ago, I thought, this is for me. I've always wanted to travel, but needed to work for a year before I could even think about it. Then a new series started up. I thought, now's my chance. Don't you think you'll be lonely? I don't think I'll have time to be homesick. I'm more worried about having too much to do and not enough time to get things organised. So we might be watching you on television in the next few months? I hope so, if I'm lucky. When will you know for sure? They choose the final eight in March. A month later, you're on your way. So do you have to pay anything? Nothing. It's all paid for. Course, camera, flights, accommodation and in-country travel. The budget is pretty tight though. No extras. I sure hope you get it. Then I'll be finding time to watch at least one program on television every week. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk on the work of a printing department at a university. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully 
and answer questions 31 to 40. I am here to give you a brief outline of the work of this new department. The Department of the Printed Word has a very short history, having been created just 10 years ago. Some statistics to start with. The first intake of undergraduate students consisted of 20 students, which rose to 37 in the second year. And we now have about 50 in the first year, doing a wide range of courses, full and part-time. We have a thriving research department, with 17 students on the taught MA course and 7 students doing research full-time. In all, we have nine full-time lecturers and 16 part-time lecturers who work mainly but not exclusively in our evening department. Of the total student body, approximately 21% are from outside the country, a number which has been increasing steadily over recent years. Although students from overseas have to reach a minimum level of competence in English before they follow a course at the university, some may require remedial help with their English, and we can offer help through the student support services as part of the general assistance given to all students. For home students, both graduate and undergraduate, there are bursaries to help with travel and accommodation, for which I would advise you to contact Mrs. Riley at the end of this session. Increasingly, we are forging external links with organisations in the publishing world. And we have been very fortunate in that we have received money to sponsor not just various students within the department, but also technicians and lecturers. Each year we hold a series of lectures which are given by external speakers in the world of printing and the media. The series of workshops that you see around you have been built thanks to a very generous donation which has allowed us to develop our facilities for bookbinding and restoration. Now, the main work of the department relates to teaching the mechanism of printing. And as most printing is now so highly technological, all our students have to be computer literate. For those of you who are interested in taking a module in this department from another department, and who feel that you may not have the necessary computer skills, don't let the technology put you off. We have a number of specialist technicians who can support and deliver crash programs in the computing technology required. As long as you can switch on the computer, you are halfway there. We have what can only be called state-of-the-art facilities, especially for those wishing to move into the publishing world, working not just as printers, but also in editing, page design, layout, and bookbinding. With the extensive facilities we have for book restoration, some of our former students are now employed as expert book restorers and conservationists, skills which were once almost dying out. In the display you will notice samples of work on book cover design, and as well as having all the necessary computer programs for dealing with printing, we have some old printing presses. Despite being largely a modern department, we do have an increasing interest in research into the history of the printed word, ranging from early European to Chinese and Japanese printing techniques. We have in fact some very well-known experts on early printing in Europe in the 15th and 16th centuries. If this area appeals to you, you can talk to Dr. Fred Clare afterwards. From China, we're lucky to have as a visiting lecturer Dr. Yu, who is an authority on early Chinese manuscripts and printing machines. If you are thinking about doing a module with us, or you are interested in doing research after you have finished your first degree, the person to talk to is Professor Clarkson, who will be able to give you all the details. For postgraduate research, you should really be thinking about applying now, even though we are only in December as the department now attracts large numbers of people and we always have many applications for each research position. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you.